All right, so um, here we go with a series of short tutorials on using uh, NEFX uh, plugin from uh, Pixelon, and um, we d we are going to show the use of a special version called NEFX for Dog Waffle. Um, this is something that you can buy directly from Pixelon, or you can find it uh, bundled with the uh, Cool Creative Bundle. If you go to coolcreativebundle.com, cool creative you'll find that it's a great value to get it. Here's a whole list of tools that they make for Adobe, for Sony, Pinnacle, Corel, Video Studio, Windows Movie Maker, and so on. Uh, and they also have a product for Project Dog Waffle. Um, any FX is actually included with the Cool Creative Bundle. So if you go to coolcreativebundle.com, you'll find that there is a couple of different tools in there including NEFX and NEFX that you see here oops I'm not sure if I can go there without switching back out oh you can you can actually link from there anyway that that will take you to the NEFX uh, by Pixelon uh, for Project Dog Waffle and so there's a whole collection of different filters that may greatly enhance the capabilities you already have in PD Pro in, in fact, one thing I want to do, I want to show you two of the free effects that they have listed here. Um, one of them is the rain effect, and the other one is the snow effect. So we'll we'll try to to use both of these for a variety of uh, effects inside of PD Pro. Now, before we do that, we need to install it. <clears throat> so what I've got here is the installer. Let's go double-click that, and of course, USC kicks in. Let's go run that. It will check whether you have DirectX 9. Um, you will not make past make it past this step if you are not on a system with DirectX 9. So you need to have a graphics card that's fairly decent in capabilities because it's going to need DirectX 9.3 uh, or somewhere around that range uh, with the ability of supporting shaders, pixel shaders, I believe. They do use the graphics hardware to accelerate the rendering. It's a pretty nice environment. It's actually pretty very high end and uh, nonetheless a very very low cost so um, here we go let's go install that I did install that yesterday I did not uninstall it so I'm actually going to just install on top now if for any reason it does this where it doesn't find where dog waffle is currently installed it may be that I have it in a folder different from where it normally no, normally is particularly PD Pro it's probably looking for where PD Pro 4 or PD Pro 5 might be Project Dog Waffle 3.5, 4.1, and so on. Doesn't realize that now I'm using Howler, and so it couldn't find it in the standard locations. I'm just gonna have to tell it where that is. And I am going to go to Program Files, and I'm going to tell it that I do have a folder called Howler. And that's all I need to do. You don't wanna go further down. Now you already see a folder here, Pixelon, but that's because I already installed into this area. Right? You normally would not see that quite yet. Uh, there will be a couple of folders, brush sets, dog lure scripts, medias, particles, a bunch of these come from Dog Waffle. You just want to select the top level of the Dog Waffle installation, whether it's PD Artist, PD Pro, 3, 4, 5, or Project Dog Waffle Professionals, whatever your path is, make sure you pick it and then go install in that area. So you'll see it here again. Let's go next, and it's basically ready to put it in there. So what it's doing at this point is essentially moving all these files that it comes with into the right place inside of your dog waffle installation. And what that means, once it's installed, is that you'll be able to run it and use it from inside of dog waffle. And that's it, uh, we have a readme file we could read, let's skip it in this case and simply go right into the program. Okay, so I'm now inside of uh, Project Dog Waffle, actually PD Howler, and um, one place where you can find the presence of NEFX by Pixelon after it's been installed, and one way to verify that indeed you did install it properly, is you go into the window menu, there it is, and select Other, and you find the plugins panel. Right, you probably will find the plugins panel available in a couple of other places too, like the brushes, 
Uh, maybe not. Maybe you'll find it on the filters. Maybe not. You're gonna have to look around a little bit. There's also on the filters, on the imports or exports. So there is a, there are all plugins. Um, there are a couple of places where you might find uh, access to the plugins filter, uh, the plugins panel. I would simply remember K shortcut keyboard. Uh, K is uh, stands for killer plugins. <laughs> at least in my vocabulary and what you would do then is see that uh, plugins uh, panel. This panel is a launch pad. Uh, you basically see all of the executables, all of the different files that are located in the dog waffle installation folder which are of a category called filter. Therefore they are plugins filter PF. So they, they end in underscore PF if they are filters. They end in input or output, import export, um, PI, PX, brushes, PB files, underscore PB.exes, uh, and then miscellaneous and also Lua scripts. Now the miscellaneous category is where we want to go because that's where our additional tool is found, right there, NEFX. When you run that, you're going to be kind of focused on that. You can't run this and then go back at the same time to do some dog waffle stuff. So this is kind of taking over and if you were to go here, um, First of all, it needs an animation, okay, so that's clever, of course we don't have an animation yet, so uh, it's doing a quick check and reminds us we need to create an animation. Let's just, just create a, a dummy animation, we got 30 frames here with plain blank, nothing in there really, but at least we can start this. Once we are in here, we can do a lot of stuff with that, but if we try to go outside of it, it's not going to let us, okay. So you need to stay inside of any effects and focus on that. When you're done, you can either cancel or you can apply it. That's those two X or checkbox. Let's cancel quickly if that changes. And what we'll do actually is we'll apply some sort of an animation in here. Just something really silly. Let's say for instance we go into the animation timeline and render a moving plasma noise of some sort. Again, we cannot do that until we actually have a placeholder. We have that here now. We have 30 frames in this placeholder and we can go to the animated categories at the bottom of this menu and find for instance the Perlin noise and perhaps uh, we'll make it really fast um, scale it high there you go there's a couple of different types, ooh that one's pretty cool kind of a cartoony look let's use that and just render so that will create a slightly moving animation of Perlin noise alright we got that we're gonna save that animation save to get there back really quickly. Okay, and we'll just say that will be our QWE, save it. And you can see this is a very fast save. All right, um, now we're going to use NEFX. All right, so NEFX is a collection of filters by Pixelon, and uh, you will probably be able to add more to it as you go to the website and find additional uh, options to either purchase or free tools to add to it. Um, it's a kind of an interesting framework. There is uh, a general control uh, slide bar down here with the animation. You can scroll up through that and you see indeed we have an animation in effect. Uh, then you have a tool here called keyframes. You click that to see the keyframes, but there are many different parameters usually that you can keyframe. So you'll see more options here once you actually select a particular filter or a particular action. Uh, there are some other things here, there's some help, there is this one here, this snowflake kind of thing, that gives you general preferences. Uh, you might not need the UI update on a slow system, maybe you don't want to drop frames uh, so you can stay in preview in real time, or you uncheck this if you actually want to see every single frame during the playtime, playback. Um, and there's a couple of other options, let's just go mostly with the defaults. Now here is where the uh, thing gets really interesting, the FX, that tab or that uh, plugin or that, that folder uh, opens two windows. There is a preview window here, the FX preview, and then there is a navigation you can go through which uh, normally starts at about this level here, any FX PD, right? That actually is inside of the uh, documents place uh, on Windows 7 that would be users, public, public documents, pixel on, any effects for PD. Um, and so so in this area you'll see a variety of plugins, I mean excuse me, a variety of filter effects. Uh, dynamic ones, let's go into one or two of those like blurring, there's uh, base linear, radial blur, and there may be many variants of them. 
where you have Quake and Shake and Tremble and Zooms and I have not even begun to explore them all. I just look at this and say, wow, there's a lot of stuff in here and you definitely think there's going to be some value there. Um, so what I'd like to do is simply go into the filters and look for the simulation and there's a couple there, the rain and the snow. Alright, so let's take a look at for instance the snow. Since we've done some snow with our own and we'd like to compare a couple of things. So you select that, you'll see the preview here, open, and then actually you do see something more. You see a couple of parameters, kind of similar to what we have in Dogwaffle natively, but these are a little bit more sophisticated. There is a progress. When you click that, or when you click the, the little green dot here, it turns green, that becomes the keyframe you can edit. Remember that keyframe down here? This button toggles the keyframe. So right now the keyframes here is on the progress. That's the progress of the snowfall. Now if I, if I scrub through that, the value goes down to zero on the left, all the way to one on the maximum. The values might be in a different range for other parameters, but for the progress that's the range from zero to one. And as you do that, you'll see the snowfall evolve. The wind, you can have it go to the left or go to the right. You can have some chaotic uh, noise applied to that. So as you're actually evolving, the snow might be in a much more turbulent environment. Uh, the snowflakes themselves might be a little bit more intense or very faint. So that's another parameter to experiment with. And then there's uh, not so much the size of the snowflakes, but rather the, the density of the snow, kind of a blizzard storm condition versus just a few flurries and that's where you want to play with it all right so let's let's give it a try let's uh let's give it uh something like a fairly strong wind blowing like blizzard to the right the progress is what's going to make this all animate okay this has to be keyframes you do not see things change unless you make them change through keyframes and um for instance if you if you go here and you didn't keyframe it it wouldn't evolve Okay, but you, as you can tell, I actually have all the keyframe stuff here, and um, I can I can go back. I can uh, say let's uh, have it initially at zero, and then at the very end here, bring it up to the top. But that could be a sudden change during the animation. I could initially have very little change, just keeping the animation down low, and only towards the very end would it actually start moving quickly. So uh, you can have that happening here. You see it's barely moving. It's just evolving very slowly because that's the parameter here. It's got barely, it, it has nearly no slope at all. And only suddenly towards the end, that's where it kicks in and starts moving up really quickly. Okay, but of course that's not how you might use it normally. You might do something like a linear transition, right? Or you might uh, even do a couple of things where it's going up and down and that actually could do a whiplash. I mean that's that's a great way to simulate a whiplash when you have a nearby explosion, let's say a nuclear blast and you want to show the air going back and forth. Well what's going to happen uh, if you do something like this, uh, the, the air particles, the snow, the, maybe it's the smoke and dust, uh, as you evolve from left to right it moves one way and then the other way and then go back and forth. It's a bit difficult to see here with all this noise activity going on in the background, but that's basically what you could use that for. Right? This uh, whiplash effect uh, can be controlled with these keyframes quite easily. And you can not only set the values of the keyframes, you can also change how to get to them. So there are some tangents, some control vectors there that allow you to lead into the control point uh, softly and continually without any sudden angles and kinks. Okay, so it is it is a very sophisticated graphical interface, uh, quite powerful indeed. And um, let's go see how do you actually apply that. Okay, so far we've just previewed what it will do in terms of snowfall, um, and of course what we really want to do is to apply that now so that it goes back into the sequence we have over there in Dog Waffle. So the NEFX is ready to do that and this is how you do that, you simply click on that. The other buttons here, there's a clear settings if you want to totally refresh things from start. And then this one here will say exit without change or this one here, yeah, let's go exit but first let's go apply that stuff. So click there and now you see it rendering. Right? Processing frames, you'll see the frame number and it's going fast, it's already done. This is because we have a fairly decent graphics card and the DirectX 9 gets some really beautiful acceleration into that. Right. Here's the animation. Uh, it's certainly doing a little bit of a whiplash uh, and uh, chao chaotic uh, snow. Now, let's get serious. Let's, let's use this actually in a real 
uh, scenic backgrounds guy environment.